Hey, good morning. Excited to share a Monday message with you, and it's really neat uh, how we learn things from other people, and then we're able to share that with with others. Uh, and that's kind of what's going to happen this morning here. My wife and I are involved in a Bible study with another couple, and it's really cool. We're studying this book by Bill Johnson. It's called Born for Significance. And I'm just wondering uh, how many of you really believe that you're born for significance? Can I have a show of hands? You really believe that you're born for significance? Now, you could answer yes, but then the next question would be, and how do you define significance? Maybe it's uh, the car you drive, the house you live in, the job you have, how many friends you have, the clothes you wear, how much money's in your bank account. I mean, those are all the things that we def uh, define significance. But that's not at all what this book is really talking about. I mean, those blessings, if they come your way, they're great. And God wants to bless us. But the most important thing he wants you to know is that he created you. And through Jesus Christ, you can become his son or his daughter. And not only will that bless you in this lifetime, but you will be, be you will be blessed for all eternity. I love that. You know, and I don't know about you, but sometimes when you experience problems and troubles and heartaches, you kind of start feeling not very significant. Can anybody relate to that? You're like, well, so-and-so doesn't ever seem to be going through this. You know, so-and-so, they got a good relationship with that person. So-and-so, they're not struggling with this financial hardship and you start feeling like you're not really important. How, how do you handle the things that come your way in a, in a God-pleasing way? And in a way that doesn't depress you or drag you down or make you sink into the mud and the mire even more than what you already are. Uh, the, the lesson that we studied uh, last night was really good because it talked about uh, adverse winds that come our way. And I, I really like that, especially here in South Dakota, as you can tell by the hoodie again. Just a little bit of that breeze that just, mm, two weeks to spring, so we're really trying to hang in there and we're really trying to be hopeful. But I just, it's it's a really good question. The, the troubles and the heartaches that come your way, I love this, are they stumbling blocks or stepping stones? That was so good when I read that. It's, this, is, this is too good not to share. Because so many people, when they uh, come across these hardships, sometimes, I mean, if you're like me, it can be a stumbling block. Is it a stumbling block or a stepping stone? Bill Johnson says in his book, the circumstances in your life don't determine the outcome. You do. <laughs> what do you think of that? The circumstances don't determine where your life's going. You do. And guess what? Navigating tough times is hardest when we lose sight of his goodness and faithfulness. He is our trust, our confidence, and our glory. Man, if I could just learn to really remember that. See, when the circumstances start really overwhelming me, it's real easy to lose sight of his goodness. Where are you, God? I thought you cared. We lose sight of his goodness. But if we would just tell ourselves, the Bible says, come and taste and see that the Lord is good. Isn't that great? Now, if I had a nice loaf of bread, can everybody just picture a nice loaf of bread, homemade? Can everybody see it? just came out of the oven. Can you smell it? <sighs> smell that fresh bread. Oh. What goes into bread? I'm not even really sure. Flour? Yeast? Sugar. Okay, so what else? Sugar. Sugar. So if, if, if I gave you a packet of yeast and said eat it, would you? Probably not. If I gave you a bowl full of flour and said, eat it, would you? Probably not. 
See, the, the ingredients don't sound good in and of themselves, but put together, you get bread. See, we don't always like the different ingredients that come our way. And we lose sight that God is working it out for one delicious, smelling, tasteful, delightful loaf of bread. Come and taste and see that the Lord is good. I love these expressions because we all can relate to food, right? We need it to survive. Food is good. It tastes good. It smells good. I love the crunch. I love the smell. I love the taste. And the scriptures say, your word is like honey on my lips. Come and taste and see that the Lord is good. You know, this, he talks in this chapter uh, about, I think it's four different main areas. Disappointment. Have you ever had disappointment in your life? Loss. Have you ever had loss in your life? Rejection. Anybody here ever been rejected? And what was the last one here? Criticism. Anybody ever been criticized? He talks about these things in our lives and how they can make us or break us. I, I just love this. Uh, pick one. Uh, law. Let's look at loss here. He says, if I waste my losses through bitterness, anger, and withdrawal, I will have wasted the most precious part of my life in Christ, the death of a dream that leads to a resurrection. He talks about how all of these things that happen in our lives, they're like seeds that fall to the ground. It, it, and the seed has to die before it germinates again. So these dreams of yours, these disappointments, the loss, the rejections, whatever, it's like, a, it's like a death in a way. But if we let God work through it, there's a resurrection. There's hope. There's joy. I love that. Loss. If I cannot handle loss in a redemptive way, I cannot be trusted with the gain God has purposed for my life. There's a verse in the Bible that says, Shall we accept good from God and not also evil? I mean, when we start thinking that everything has to go good, go well, what happens? Entitlement. I'm so sick of entitlement in this society. We're not entitled to anything. When you really think about it, we deserve nothing but death. We have rebelled against God. We have rejected his ways. But he has brought Jesus Christ into our lives to wipe all of that clean, to forgive us. Now we can trust in him through the power of his Holy Spirit. Boy, I love that. God can turn all this around. Loss, rejection. Uh, look at this one here. <clears throat> oh, I got to read this one here. This is still under rejection. It's vital to learn to navigate life with the knowledge that some have rejected us and it's okay. Wow. Rejection often reveals how much we depend on the approval of others for our self-esteem. It brings these things to the surface. Not so we carry shame, but so we see the weakness of our position and move to stable ground, which is based on how God thinks of us. Whenever insecurity is exposed, wrong security is exposed. It's an invitation to change. Man, don't you love that? It, 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 if, you, if you fall, and whimper every time somebody rejects you in life, you, you kind of got that sense of entitlement again. You're kind of like showing where your security really lies when it really should be with the Lord. I love this. And, and criticism by people, I'm just going to close with this last quote of his. If I don't live by the praises of men, I won't die by their criticisms. <laughs> oh, don't you love that? We don't want to die by people's criticisms, right? Well, they quit living by them. Quit living by their praises. Whether you're expecting them or not, don't depend on it. We live and breathe for an audience of one. Who's the one? God. How do we get to God? Jesus. He paved the way for us. He's how we handle 
losses in our life and rejection and criticism. He is the one who takes all the ingredients and some of them may stink, but he has a master plan and that nice smelling loaf of bread is waiting to be revealed. And that's what gives you significance. Don't ever let anyone tell you different. This is Pastor John from 15.5 Ministries. You have a great day.